With that, we'll move on to Mr. John McClellan, uh, who's going to talk to us um, about uh, Minnesota. And uh, John is um, a very handsome fellow, as you see right there. But um, he is also a freeway, the Freeway Operations Center at um, Minnesota's uh, DOT's Regional Transportation um, Center, Management Center. Uh, uh, you know, that's a, uh, it, it, a lot of people don't know, but it's one of the um, top ITS um, um, programs in the country with, with, with the, their coverage and their technology and the things that they've done. John's worked at the DOT since 2002. He is not an engineer, so he moved himself up in spite of that. Um, John's group is responsible for mon mon uh, monitoring a 1,000 freeway uh, traffic cameras, uh, locating incidents, deploying overhead signs, coordinating response with state patrol, and uh, which they have integrated CAD there, which is one, one of many reasons um, why I love John. He has a lot of knowledge, and um, he, you know, we call on him for a number of different topics, the training, integrated CAD, ITS, service patrols. So we, uh, we are, you know, he's a go-to guy. John offered, um, offered uh, this as a recommendation of one what he could share um, on how he uses the videos for responder training. So with that, John, if you don't mind taking it away. All right. Thanks a bunch, Paul. Everybody hear me okay? Perfect. Yes, sir. All right, good deal. And yeah, thanks a lot, Paul. I really appreciate it. Um, so what I'll talk about, and I'll try to go through this pretty quick, stay on, on time because I know we got some other folks with great stuff coming up too. So what I'm talking about is short video clips um, either used a, a, in, a, in a PowerPoint, in a presentation, or strung together um, with some, some finessing and, and as part of a more of a produced uh, training video. Um, specifically cable median barrier and uh, TMC traffic camera video. Um, and, and, you know, everybody loves video. Video tells a story. Video is a great way to get information out. The other thing that I'll add to it for us in Minnesota is that it's really been, uh, the use of video has really been key as far as um, being able to deal with the, the limited resources that we have. I mean, very, very limited resources, and we wouldn't be able to do, uh, as got, gotten as far as where we have without, uh, without the use of video. So high tension cable median barrier certainly has come up last a few years as one um, with a lot of uh, desire for, for training material. Um, I've been working on trying to do uh, training in Minnesota last 11 years or so, gather best practices from the vendors, from the responders, um, for maintenance, and, and trying to push this out in Minnesota to the responders. Um, so extremely valuable. We've had it in Minnesota 2004, 2005. We are into the, I think, over the 10,000 number of hits in the cable. Um, I think I could easily say we are into the hundreds of lives saved. Um, that screen capture was a, from a road rage situation, and uh, there's an SUV going into the median, and at the angle he was going, he for sure would have plowed into that other SUV head-on. If it wasn't a fatal, it's at least a, a serious and a prolonged extrication. Cable stopped it. All good. Nobody hurt. Um, rare for issues with the cable. I mean, the most common thing certainly is the towers and, and having to uh, do a lot of extra messing around in order to get a vehicle out. Um, for responders, the, I, I'm aware of a half dozen or so uninjured patients that couldn't easily self-extricate because the cable was blocking the doors, so they had to climb through a window or do something a little bit more. I mean, it, it may have happened already, and if it hasn't happened already, it will happen where um, there will be a need for, uh, for, for fire or for rescue to, to extricate uh, around the cable or, or disabling the cable. Um, and it's dangerous. It has... Uh, it's under extreme amount of tension. Um, if something breaks, if something goes wrong, if somebody's in the wrong place, cuts the wrong thing, it can kill people. We haven't had anybody killed, but we have had people hurt. Uh, we have had uh, at least one fairly serious injury uh, that came when a piece broke off. Um, so it is dangerous, or it can be. And hands-on isn't practical. I mean, there's a number of people that are going to mess around with it. Um, the towers, fire, it's not practical to do hands-on, at least not for us. Uh, to do hands-on for everybody who could benefit from the training. So my tip, um, my suggestion, something that's worked good for me, um, watch out for major construction projects. Is there cable in the, con like big interchange rebuilds, is there cable in the area? Um, does the cable get, uh, does the uh, project get rid of the cable? 
And if it does, hey, can I come out and, and take it down uh, and use that taking it down uh, to gather video for, for uh, training, for best practices? And so far, I've done this half dozen or so times. Um, I'll reach out to the DOT's project manager. They'll go to the prime. They'll go to the sub. Um, and if everybody is, is good, everybody's thumbs up, then, then uh, it proceeds. And so far, not any problem. Everybody, once you tell them what it is that you're doing, this is for public safety, it's for responders. Everybody says, oh, yeah, sure, that's not a problem. The most common thing that's happened for me is, oh, yeah, you can take it down. It's not a problem, but you've got to do it by next week. Um, and the only way to, uh, maybe the only way to get in there as well, there's a lane closure that's coming in a couple of days at, at night. There's a nighttime lane closure. You can come and do it then, or, um, you know, otherwise it's got to be done in the next couple of days. So you got to be able to move fast. Um, MnDOT has a, a training video crew or a crew that goes and does training video. They're great guys. They do a hell of a job, but they're booked out a couple of months in advance. And I don't have a budget to hire somebody. I don't have a budget to um, to pay somebody overtime. So basically, I mean, me going out and doing it myself, it isn't that hard. I would suggest this to other folks too. It is possible. It's not that hard. Um, you can go and do this too. Um, so scope it out, supply the cameras, do the video editing. Again, this is just 20, 30 second clips, uh, maybe up to a minute. So goal is to capture uh, best practices. Um, it is not a department or regional uh, hands-on. It is not everybody come out here and get to stare at it. Or you're working alongside live traffic on the freeway, so trying to really keep the impact to as minimal as possible. Um, my invite list is uh, the subject expert, which is basically the maintenance supervisor, somebody with uh, the experience to say, cut that, don't cut that, here's what will happen, don't do that, stand over here. Um, the person who actually knows the... Um, who knows it, and then my actors, the people who are going to be the ones doing the video, depending on who it is, if it's fire, if it's patrol pushing something down, if it's the service patrol, then have those reps there. Um, for fire, it's one or two fire trucks carrying whatever is universal. The goal is not to train that city's department, it's to use them as the actors to then demonstrate to everybody else, here's how you do it. Um, plus, there's a benefit to them that they get to have that hands-on. And certainly if you can get some people to help out, if not with the cameras, or at least keeping an eye open, uh, watching for things, that's great too. Um, my, some other suggestions just on the video side, if you're going to do this yourself, um, go out there uh, beforehand, a couple of days before, bring, couple of, bring your camera, get some B-roll, get some stills, as much as you can, because it's all going to look different when it comes down. And you never know exactly what thing it is you're going to wish that you had to illustrate a certain point that you're not going to know about until after you put it all together. So go out ahead of time and get some, get some video. Um, for camera equipment, a couple of GoPros, you know, and, and they don't have to be the brand new ones. Um, they can be older ones. If, if you don't have it, you know, your kids don't have it, somebody in your office, somebody in your office's kids has probably got a GoPro or two that you can borrow. Um, you know, as long as it's HD, it doesn't need to be 4K, 8K, whatever. Um, otherwise, you're getting them used a couple hundred bucks. Pretty easy. So I'll do a couple of GoPros. Um, you, know, you can stick it on the, you can stick it on a bumper. You can stick it on a hel helmet. You can get that first-person view. And then a second one, a little further back for the retraction. The other nice thing is if you know something goes crazy, it's just the camera getting knocked down. It's not a person. Um, and then I'll have a third camera that that on a monopod or a tripod that uh, is kind of your in-between, and that's the one that you can move around to uh, make sure you're catching exactly what it is that you want to get. Get extra video, get extra footage, more cameras is great. You get more things, more views. You're never sure exactly which one's going to be the one you want. Just don't go too crazy because if you're the guy, you're the one person that's doing this, you don't want to overcomplicate it either. Um, one big one, and this was kind of a big duh for us, that when, when we did one of these a couple of months ago and then like everybody's all standing by waiting for it to retract and, well, well that wasn't as dramatic as we thought it was. Like, well, yeah, duh, we didn't, I mean, it was just the native tension on the cable. We didn't have the extra tension on it that a crash would have. That's why it wasn't so dramatic. Um, so in this case, so this was a, a follow-up one, uh, just using the service patrol, cranking the um, cable a little bit out of line. That put some tension on the cable. It's still not quite as much as what you'd get if it was actually a, a crash. So another, uh, another um, suggestion would be to... Um, you know, if it's not your service patrol, I mean, even better be a tow truck, crank it all line. Even better than that, if you really want to, if you really have the opportunity to do it, a loader, a dump, something like that with some chains, really pull it out of line to simulate um, kind of the extremes of what you're going to see. 
And I forgot to mention this before, but when your maintenance folks comes out, bring a tension meter and get tension on the cable before you take it down, too. That's another uh, good measure to have to, to tell you uh, and to tell folks um, here's what to expect when it retracts. Um, and note what the temperatures are, and this is a big one that I have to remind people if I'm showing this. Um, there's a, for the cold weather folks, and there's a huge difference between how the cable is going to react when it's 60, 70, 80 degrees out than when it's 20 below zero. Um, it gets a lot angrier. It gets a lot scarier when it's cold. And the colder it is, the angrier and the scarier it gets. So that's going to be a hard one to, uh, to really dissimulate. Um, I don't think I want to go out there when it's 20 below zero and shoot this video, but it is just one of those things to keep in mind for the cold weather folks. Um, get out there early. Be prepared for site issues. I know with, with one of these, uh, everything looked great. Get out there the day of, and the contractor put a whole bunch of J barrier like right next to the cable. Like, oh, my God. Um, but everybody's good. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy to work with you as long as you're telling them what it's for and, and got somebody to go and move it. Um, and then the best practices stuff. I, with a couple of these ones that we've done, you know, you got the manufacturer says, well, you do it this way. You, get it, you can get our own maintenance folks say, oh, yeah, you do it this way. You try it and, like, this doesn't work. What the heck are we doing wrong? Well, it's just, it just isn't working. Um, and that's a great, great way to, to learn, hey, you know, even the best practices. And it really kind of helps, um, you know, get it straight in your head, get it straight in your training, you know, what is the most comprehensive things to tell people to keep it simple as far as how to react to it, how to work with it. So that's on the cable. The other thing I'll mention is TMC traffic camera video. Um, so only a small handful of states record. Minnesota is one of those. For all of the non-DOT people on the phone, if you want to trigger your favorite TMC person, just mention traffic camera video recording and see, uh, see what they say. Um, Minnesota's recorded for um, some time. It started out as being individual DVRs and worked its way up. I think 2008, 2009 is when we switched to all the cameras being recorded. Um, so the value balance the hassle. Well, it's a great tool for training. It's a great tool for outreach, but it is a, it is a big pain in the butt. And I can say that because I'm the one who advocated for recording it for uh, a lot for training and for instant management. And I'm also the guy who gets stuck dealing with it. All of the requests come through me for the metro area, about 1,600 a year. Um, and I've got some help from one of my dispatchers to help with a subset of them. But yeah, it's an hour or two a day that I'm now spending doing video requests. So there's the downside of it. But as you can see, it's, it's a, it is a fundamental uh, part of our TIM training. I mean, back to 2003, um, when we first you know, was really advocating it and getting examples of things. Um, a two-hour exurban fire department, that's about 32 clips, just for examples of some recent ones. St. Paul, so there's a city, a, a uh, urban department, it's a three-hour, 72 clips, and then a 45-minute to hour-long cable barrier um, PowerPoint, that's about 25 clips. So you can see how, uh, how much it gets used. All right, so what's the values? The biggest value that, one of the biggest values that I've found is it builds a connection. It, it's um, you know, and I tell folks when I do the training, like, you know, yeah, I'm working in an office looking at screens, but we watch people crash every day, all day long, and this is how they do it. This is the piece that I can bring to you that's maybe a different view. I'm not a cop, I'm not a firefighter, I'm not an EMT, but here's what I can bring to you. It's how this stuff happens because we watch it all day, every day, and so do my folks. So here's what we see. Everybody loves video, too, is another part of it. Um, big one. How crashes happen, uh, and this is, you know, one of these things that it, it's not it's not random, it's arbitrary is maybe the best words I can think of it. And basically, it's I mean, human error is the polite way of saying it. The reality is, it's somebody doing something stupid at a time, and whether it's so stupid of a thing that it, that a crash is inevitable, or it's a couple of people doing something stupid at the same time and place that now they crash into each other, or it's doing something stupid every day and getting away with it until your luck runs out or the weather changes and the margin of error shrinks to a point where, where something bad happens. Um, and really illustrating that, that these, these aren't unique occurrences that, you know, how these crashes happen. Um, you show why good traffic control is needed for the good drivers, the ones that are paying attention and on the good side of the curve, at least at that moment. 
And then why you need blocking. You show examples of cars just driving into stopped vehicles, driving in the stopped traffic, driving in the stalled vehicles, going off the road, driving through red lights. You know, this is the reality. Doesn't matter how many flashing lights you have, if somebody's not paying attention, they're going to drive into you. And that's why you need blocking. All right, so I have to show examples of good traffic control. Um, so I'll show as they, as they roll up and, and set up a scene, also show, and, and for the most part, you show these clips and they're obvious enough that even somebody with minimal training is like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And you show examples of bad stuff and it's like, you know, what, what are they doing? What's the point? Can anybody in this room answer what, what the purpose is of, of what's being done right now? And you show examples of that. And then of course the crazy stuff, especially responders are all like, oh my God, that's nuts. I can't believe that just happened. That's crazy. Um, so a few questions or a few items, I guess, for thought, for discussion. Um, Ohio, um, it, and if you noticed on, uh, if you noticed in YouTube, you noticed a lot of things. Back, uh, a lot of the squad hits that you see on video and you see in training come from Ohio, and you also see them on the Goofy TV shows too. And, and uh, several years ago, I, I made a point of trying to kind of pin this down. Why are so many of these coming from Ohio? And I talked to somebody at Ohio State Patrol, and I said, well, our colonel or our commander at, the, at that time said, um, I want to make a real effort to get video out and, and publicize it to show people reality of what happened. So the result, that's why they come from Ohio and it's great video and if I want an example illustrating like in this one why passenger side approach is better than driver side approach, um, I'm going to have a lot better off, I'm going to have a lot better luck getting Ohio video than I'm going to get Minnesota State Patrol video. So something for the community, especially in the law enforcement side, you know, is there opportunities to, to do what Ohio is doing, to follow that example, at least within the training community? Because um, it is good video. It is useful. It does reach other responders, and it, and it helps click with them. Um, for the, uh, you know, for us with our collection of videos, the other states that record, the squad video, how can we as a group, all of us within the training community, how can we share this stuff? So we're not having to try to look through YouTube or somebody sees a news report and then you have to spend time trying to figure out some way to extract that video and then get it into your own presentation. Is there better ways to share this right from, the, from what the source is? And you need context. You need context and background. The big one is, oh my God, it's a horrible video. Did anybody die? And, and you want to be able to answer that honestly. Um, what are the learning points? Are we all on the same page with this particular clip? Is this really showing? Are we all saying the same thing? And attribution is always good. You know, where did this come from? Who provided that? Um, so how do we do that? You know, that that's my thought. You know, my question for others in the training community. You know, how do we better share this media as a resource? For the DOT folks, one thing I will mention. I know the whole idea of of um, saving recording traffic video. It, it is. It's a scary thought. It's a lot of work. It's a big pain in the butt. One thing I will mention is that, um, and I know some folks have gotten pressured to record and, and have held the line on it, um, we are on this, this brink of this huge explosion in data with connected vehicles. And I, from what I've seen with how, just with the requests I get for traffic camera video, um, this is just, you know, if you're a DOT and you're pulling in data, you're sending data out, you're going to want to save that data, you're going to want to analyze that data, that also means you're going to get requests for that data. Um, I have a feeling, you know, this is something that all of us are going to have to keep in mind on the DOT side is how we, how we keep, how we organize, and how we process these requests because it's, it's coming and it's going to be interesting. Um, just a couple other things I'll mention. Um, as far as the video editing goes, um, Windows Movie Maker is great. Uh, it, it's not in the current versions of Windows. Or uh, yeah, in um, yeah, in, in Windows, you can still find an ex executable that installs it for Windows 10. Very simple. Very very easy. That's what I do a lot of uh, just quick and dirty editing in for for training. Uh, OpenShot is a uh, another uh, free one, open source program that's out there. A lot more comprehensive, a lot more tools in it. Um, and then a couple of examples of uh, professionally done ones. Um, Scene Safe was one that we did in Minnesota about five years ago. It's a 30-minute program. That was through a contractor that put that together. Has some examples of traffic camera video along with interviews, along with um, squad video all kind of merged together. And then the uh, cable barrier training is about uh, 14 minutes long, and that's a mixture of um, 
the, the stuff I was talking about in the field and then some traffic camera video. So that's it for me. Thank you uh, very much. I'll hand it back to Paul.